Hi guys, I'm Ryan Saltz and I'm here to welcome you to the San Antonio Express News Insider Guide. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, inflation. I think that's uh, the topic that is on everybody's minds. Um, and I'm extremely excited to have with me today uh, the three gentlemen from uh, Federal Employee Benefits. Uh, we have with us here Ron, uh, Brad, and Levi. Um, I'd love to get a little bit of insight on who you are uh, and what Federal Employee Benefits is. Well, you know, at Federal Employee Benefits, we take a unique approach working with uh, federal employees, the military, and reservists to help them accomplish their goals and to reach their retirement. And hopefully, in most cases, we find that they end up retiring with as much money retired as they are working. And we do make that accomplish that quite a bit. I dig that. Um, and so uh, for for all of you, how did you really end up in this uh, field? I always think to myself, like, uh, was math your strong suit or you're just excited <laughs> to be helping people build wealth? Um, well, I mean, if I can expand a little more on that, I mean, collectively, we've all been in this about 60 two plus years wow. in this business. And um, it's funny, I started doing this myself 50 years ago, this last February. So it's been more than anything where I am at this point in my life, I do it more because I just enjoy it a lot. And my other partners, associates here have been working with me and doing a great job over the years. That's wonderful. And uh, I'd love to bring bring both of you in. Um, sure, sure. Um, so I, I've been in the, you know, economics and finance things my entire career. And here in San Antonio, I went through a layoff through one of the banking organizations. And uh, I had met Ron uh, through our church. And we, it was just a perfect meld to be able to, because I love helping people. And every person that we talk to is a different story. So it was a natural fit uh, to, you know, deal with the the banking side to the investments to real estate. It was all kind of combined and it became a really good marriage between us uh, and, and growing this support that the military and civil service people need. Awesome. And and yourself, Levi? So several years black, back, Ron was actually a client of mine in my last career that I'd been with for 21 years. And uh, he came up to me and he said, hey, you know, you, you deal with finances and investments and things of that in the company you're with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, have you ever thought about going into this industry? And I said, wow, that would be awesome. Long story short, uh, we'll fast forward several years. Uh, that's what we did. We moved forward with it. So uh, he went from being a client of mine to I get to work directly with him on a day-to-day -day basis. And I left as a uh, general manager of the company that I was with for 21 years and, and uh, started a new career several years ago. And so uh, neat dynamic. We have a very neat dynamic. Yeah, it's definitely sounds 62 years in the business. I mean, uh, you've got to have learned a lot. You've got to have seen a lot. I mean, there's been quite a trajectory over the history of just America um, <laughs> and most recently with everything that's going on. I mean, inflation's not something that's happened uh, just once. This isn't the first time. So it sounds like, you know, if you can trail it back to the 70s, we've had that before and you've seen it. Uh, but before we get to those topics, I do want to uh, go back to this idea of supporting the community and uh, highlight something that you have going on upcoming. Uh, um, Brad, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about the charity work that y'all do. You bet. So um, I'm a chapter director of um, Military 5013C called Wish for Our Heroes. And uh, our mission is to help our heroes against hardship. So in an active duty, whether they're deployed or a family member or something is going through a struggle, basic needs even, um, we're out there to try to grant a wish. So it's kind of like a Make-A-Wish Foundation, but it's really geared specifically to, and we are, you know, nationally, we're in almost every state. We've raised um, over 15 million um, in the last Oh, probably 10, 11 years now that we've been yeah. doing. Wow. And I've, I've been the director uh, for the last eight and Ron has been right by me because it's it's so rewarding to see the change in families' lives, whether it's a car repair or giving them some diapers or, you know, all of these different pieces. One of the, the biggest ones is just even medical pieces that TRICARE might not cover. Uh, we help fill in those gaps. 
And it's and it's one hundred percent volunteer. That's right. Wow. Very important. Yeah. Wow. All the the founder, board of directors, chapter directors, we don't take an income. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, uh just seeing and hearing fifteen million dollars. Wow. I mean, uh the lives that you've changed over the course of this time, I'm sure have been uh, fantastic. And then going into your sort of day-to-day work, it seems like y'all are changing lives for people as well, helping them create those futures that they look for. But the future may be murky, right? I think that's a question that everybody has right now with inflation. Um, we're in Military City, USA. Y'all are focused on folks that have backgrounds in federal employment, military, active, uh, veteran, stuff like that, uh, spouse of veteran. Um, so... How does that what is what is in what is the impact of this inflation that we're seeing? And, you know, what does that mean? What is it? I mean, I can see it at the gas pump, perhaps on days or I can see it in the grocery store on days. But when I think about retirement, which is like a billion years for me for now, uh, what does it mean? It's a huge concern nowadays because, you know, inflation is really visible now. I mean, we all kind of know that things get more expensive. You know, you know, 30 years ago, I'm buying gas at 75 cents a gallon, right? I could get my, <laughs> my McDonald's or whatever it was for a quarter, right? We know that things are going to get expensive. But today, I mean, you know, we're, we're seeing things go through the roof. And that's that idea of inflation. The actual items that we're trying to acquire, you know, things that we need to day to day, whether it's, you know, getting materials for building or gas or food at the table or medical supplies or anything, prescriptions, they're getting more expensive. And our concern is, is like, let's say, hey, how is this going to impact me? Um, while I'm preparing for retirement and then when I don't want to work, like Ron said, you know, when I want to stop working, what's going to be that change of income and can I afford to do that? Th- that's the biggest thing that we see is can I actually retire right now in this hyperinflation, you know, environment that we're in? Yeah. And I think that 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 goes directly to, you know, how do you how do you plan for the future in an uncertain present? Right. Um, so what does inflation, what what effect does it have on retirement contributions? So that brings up a really, really good point. And I'm going to kind of just play off of what Brad said. Um, you know, inflation was a word that the average person, um, we'll say three, five years ago, didn't encounter every day, right? Because inflation kind of typically creeps up on us just a little bit at a time. But here this last last year or so, inflation, yeah, I mean, it's considerably gone up. So everybody understands, uh, for the most part, what inflation is, the cost of goods and whatnot, just getting higher and higher and higher. So uh, yeah, your everyday household item gets more expensive, right? Um, and so we deal with this on a daily basis. Um, let's say your average household, we have a car payment, we have a house payment, um, we have groceries we're buying, right? Well, along with that, the plan is people also set some contributions aside for retirement. If we're doing things correctly, we're setting some money aside for retirement. Well, I don't know about you guys in your household, but uh, if things get a little bit tight in your household, are you going to quit paying your car payment? Probably not because you need that car. Same thing with the house. We're making the house payment. We're buying the groceries, yada, 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 on down until eventually we reach the weakest link here and we go, well, maybe I'll hold off on my retirement contribution, you know, for the next six months or eight months till things slow down or, or we have more income coming in. Well, then, then what happens a year down the road? two years down the road, Mm -hmm. three years down the road, those contributions aren't going in. And what people really don't realize is those contributions, not only are they part of your retirement, but based upon how far you have to go down the road, whether your retirement's 10 years, five years, 50 years, those reti- that money you would have put in there now has to grow, but you didn't put that money in there, so it's not getting to grow in the market if the market does so. And so, yeah, our our... Our contributions play a huge part in our retirement. And when inflation goes up, uh, we typically see it. A lot of times people go, eh, let's cut back on some areas. So we definitely try to encourage people, hey, let's see if we can find some areas, other areas to cut back because uh, it is important for you to fund your future. Um, I get a I, I get a popular response from a lot of younger people that will typically say, uh, they'll say, you know, I'm not going to worry about retirement as much when I get older, you know? Yeah. And I say, I always ask him back, I say, have you ever been old? 
<laughs> have you ever been older? And just feel old. Yeah. yeah. So it's an appropriate question. So I say, let's plan for things that maybe uh, we didn't plan for before. You, you know, know, planning for retirement, 90% of it is the discipline, like Levi's saying, mm -hmm. to stay with it, keep contributing and stick with it. I don't care what comes up, how much something comes along that you want to buy. You got to say no to yourself mm -hmm. and keep contributing into that 401k, keep retiring that money into that retirement plan. Yeah. Hey, you don't you don't want to have that idea of trying to keep up with the Joneses mentality, right? He's like, oh, well, they have this and I want this. And Absolutely. The key would be is if you do that good planning, like Ron and Levi are saying is, then you turn around and you're like, I can retire earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm not working till 70, mm -hmm. 72 or whatever, just to be able to, to make it work. Yeah, a real, a real appropriate example. My, my wife and I wanted to build a new house a year or two ago. And uh, we were looking at the whole situation and uh, I told her, I said, listen, we've got to do and we've got to give ourselves the same advice that I would give any of my clients. And maybe right now is not the pro appropriate time for us to be doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, building mm -hmm. costs are high. A lot of things are high right now. Uh, and let's maybe reevaluate it so we can keep funding the areas of our life that we need to fund, because, mm -hmm. you know, as long as we live to the retirement area or mm -hmm. when or when we want to start living off some of these things, uh, we're going to need that money there. So um, I typically tell people all the time, you know, let's play this like chess, not checkers. And mm -hmm. if we do it right, you can uh, turn that good retirement or decent retirement into a great one. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, I love that because uh, it, it tells me that y'all are not the cobbler's kids wear no shoes scenario, <laughs> right? You're living by the advice that you share. Um, but thinking about that, that point of inflation, right? You said it was talking, uh, talking towards what you see at the market. I have a great Dane, right? Uh, I've had to change his diet to be a good Dane, you know, uh, cause the price of dog food went from oh. 50 to $70. I mean, for the stuff, he's a great Dane, but now he's good. So I, I'm going to use that analogy now moving forward. <laughs> I love yeah. that. That's I love a great that. One. And, uh, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, what do I, how do I approach this in terms of my my personal retirement, like it's nebulous. Like maybe I'm new, maybe I don't know, or, Hey, things just went up in cost. And so what am I to do? Right. Yeah. So, and that, and that's a really good question. And so, you know, federal employee benefits is trying to help people recognize that there's the planning stage and then what can I do when I'm there? Right. And so let's talk first about like, preparing. And, and as Levi and Ron have both said, is that you have to start saving, right? So you got to be in a budget. You've got to know that you've got the time, the time horizon to make that work, right? So, you know, don't wait. Don't wait until, oh, you know, my daughter had a, a friend that said, oh, why aren't you partying? You're, you're 25 years old. And she's like, yeah, I want to be done at 65. I don't mm -hmm. want to wait. You're still partying and working. So you've got to, you got to set up and be real and you got to make it happen. Then another way to help with inflation and these approaches are maybe there's an opportunity that you can further your career, right? Get into a better things where it allows you some extra money to save more mm -hmm. into those things, sure. um, into that piece. It's just in, in those. And then when you are at retirement, right, how do I make every dollar count? Right. And that one is really revolves around that approach is around taxes. Right. So we really need to use the vehicles that says if I while I'm working, I can put it into an investment goal that turns around that when I'm now retired and I'm not going to work anymore mm -hmm. and I want every dollar to come to me to pay for things versus giving 10 percent, 15, 28 percent Uncle Sam right. in taxes. I need that to work because we all recognize that. One, taxes is going to go up, and two, inflation is going to go up. Things are going to get more expensive. It's just natural. And so we need to recognize some of those vehicles now, like the Roth uh, 401k or the Roth IRA, is a wonderful approach to those, especially that are younger, to say, well, at least when I do, 100% of that money can go to my daily living. I don't have to give up that right. money to somebody else. No. You know, I think... As I go back to this, doing this for 50 years, I think I think of the analogy we've always heard, and that is, you don't you know you don't plan to fail, mm -hmm. you just fail to plan, mm -hmm. and that story has never never changed. It's never changed. You've got to pay yourself first, right? Pay yourself first every time. Yeah, actually, I love that because that's something I say in my my day job, which is helping people start businesses right. is you can only give away if you create first. 
right? right. And it's right. Uh, it's really important. As much as you want to do good, you have to do good first by yourself. Otherwise, there will be no good left over to give, right? That's right. Um, but m- moving moving forward, I mean, you work with uh, federal benefits, those that are receiving federal benefits, and planning on a re- planning for retirement on a daily basis. But I think there's this open ended question of like, hey, I'm retired now. Um, and things got more expensive. What do I, what am I doing? Well, let me just interject in that because I myself, a, 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 quite a bit more than them, I'm getting a lot of people that are retired. I'm dealing with a lot of people that are retired. And one of the biggest concerns they have is making sure they don't outlive their money. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a huge concern. We, I review the clients, most of them yearly, and we, and that subject comes up a lot. But let me tell you another thing that's happened as well. And that is the fact that there are already statistics show 25 to 30 percent of people my age and a little younger that are retiring Mm -hmm. or supporting kids they weren't planning on having to support. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't love their kids or grandkids, but now they've got a burden they weren't planning on. And believe you me, it's something we're seeing a whole lot more of. That's, I mean, that's totally fascinating. I wonder about this. It's an ever evolving, uh, ever evolving society, right? Never really expecting for the grandparents to have to take care of the grandkids, um, Mm -hmm. for those expenses to be incurred, right? You think, Hey, I'm going to be off in, in retirement. And yet all these new things that never happened before are happening. Um, and then, you know, another question that I have sort of related, and you're talking about outliving your money, but then also there's so many people that are working past retirement age, um, how does that factor in? Does that factor in at all? I'm just curious. I think it does. And I think that people, first of all, I always use the expression, somebody must have came up with the word retirement. Mm -hmm. I mean, 100 years ago, 50 (laughs) years ago, 75 years ago, people didn't retire. They just worked till they die. Now, I'm not telling people they need to work till they die. Because I would, I think they would like to do what's called retire. But the point is, sometimes we have people that are coming in to retire with the government. And if federal employee, employee benefits, we sit down and we run the figures with them mm-hmm. and show them that when you want to go to retire, you're really not going to be able to make it. Mm-hmm. You can't retire on this. And I can't tell you how many of them will say, well, I don't care what that says. I'm going to retire anyway. And then they put themselves into a strain. Mm-hmm. They've got their 401k or their money that's been in TSP, for example. And we do our best to help manage that. But the point is, if they're sitting here yanking down 10 or 15% on that retirement money and they're only earning 6 or 7% because we got to be more careful when mm-hmm. they're later years, then their ship is sinking. So we really try to help them understand what they need to do, they don't get backed into that wall. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, I've got five children, right? And so with five kids, you look at and says, okay, how am I going to be able to balance all of these? I mean, the idea was, hey, they're going to take care of me one day. (laughs) That's not necessarily the approach to those, but we need to turn around and we need to try to find ways of helping them realize that you know, I am going to work longer because with the pay decrease, you know, whether it's five hundred dollars or a thousand, or it's even even, that inflation today is like wow. You know, food has gone up fifty to sixty percent in a lot of categories, right? And if that stays in that m- mode, I'm definitely going to run out of money mm-hmm. just to be able to keep my same standard of living that I'm dealing with now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you should be out living on a beach and pina coladas and stuff like that. But apparently the pineapple went up in price. So that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. you just don't put the liquor in it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that you have that's a virgin, savings. virgin retirement. And virgin yeah. retirement. Yeah. Right. That's what it is. Um, so helping those with uh, employee benefits, um, their spouses, uh, you know, oftentimes or I mean, inevitably, hey, we're all going to end up. um in the life beyond, whatever that looks like, right? Um, how do you help the surviving spouse really understand what that looks like and taking advantage of the benefits that are there? Obviously, that's a tumultuous time. Right. It can be scary uh, and be uncertain. I always tell people, if you're scared or excited, you need to call somebody. <laughs> what did, what, what's on the other end of that call for y'all? I, I mean, no one is going out there wishing or hoping that they're going to be a widow or a widower, right? Mm-hmm. That's not like the daily plan. But you've got to recognize, especially here in Military City USA, right, where we have lots of civil service, a lot of active duty, a lot of veterans and those type of pieces is 
you know, what happens to those pensions? What happens to Social Security? What happens if my spouse were to die? What is going to be that 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 area? And so especially when we get into those older ages, right, when if, if we've had this situation recently uh, for me is that a spouse says, as an employee, I have my VA disability. I've got a military check. I got a civilian check, Social Security check. Let's just say that added up to five to six thousand dollars a month. And the spouse has been working their whole time, right? So they, mm-hmm. they've been having their own social security and they both have 401ks and all those different areas. But when that employee dies with all of these different pensions and all the things, they may not get anything if they don't prepare. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, only 20%. Of yeah. It. They might get to zero. I mean, the social security could be zero. The, right. the pension checks could be half or things, but those decisions are needing to understand how it affects the spouse is not something that we wait until the year we're going to retire. Yeah. When I, we needed to address that early on so that you know that you can plan for that. And, and I, you know, I struggle with this and I, I wonder, you know, who else might struggle with this? Uh, can you, maybe you can humanize it for me, Brad. Just, is there an experience that you had uh, a client or otherwise that you maybe you can share that'll, that'll kind of shed light on that? So, and, and this one was, was really important and it wasn't, it was someone whose spouse was there, didn't have any survivor pensions, right? Wow. So there was no income, literally <clears throat> was working at age 62, right? And was collecting a widow's benefits from Social Security, right? And working. And then all of a sudden, just halfway into the year, I get a phone call and they're like, I just found out that if I make any more money on my job, because there's called an earnings test, Right. It was mm-hmm. so scary. If I make any more money, then I have to give the all of that widow's benefits from Social Security back because you're only allowed to make X amount of money and collect a widow's benefit. So she was in this dilemma of do I retire or do I not? Re- I mean, not re- do I stop working and give it all back? Or, But she had lost all of the income from the spouse. Just to interrupt, federal employee benefits, we just do our darndest to help people to understand more how Social Security works. I'm in the yeah. Social Security years. Y'all are a long ways off from it, <laughs> but it can be kind of tricky. Mm-hmm. And people want to know when, it, should I collect it? How do I collect it? What are the limitations if I am working at a certain age? Right. What's that going to cost me if I start working? I mean, these are all the things that we've always helped people pull together. And, and time yeah. horizon, time is everything when you're dealing with investments. If you think that you can wait to the very end, you're it's like a sinking ship and you're never going to be, be able to get the pull out the water out of it. It's at a certain point, it's too mm-hmm. late. You've got to allow yourself an, enough time. I think you really said it best earlier. If you're nervous or concerned about something, that's really the time when you go, I should probably pick up the phone and just mm-hmm. call somebody. Uh, yeah. I, I think Brad and Ron would probably agree. Federal Employee Benefits, the people with probably – Uh, The most successful retirements that we see, it doesn't always just involve money, but they knew what they were walking into. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Uh, So you have to plan ahead. You know, you fail to plan. Yeah, Don't don't do that. So the best thing you can ever do, if you're sitting on the uh, podcast right now and you're listening, you're going, okay, I'm not sure about what my social security is going to be at 62 or 67, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, or I'm not sure about my pension, or I'm not sure about the spousal benefit or I'm Mm -hmm. whatever it is, just pick up the phone and call and, and, and and simplify it for you. Cause Mm -hmm. that is the difference between a good retirement and a great retirement is knowing where you're heading. And if we're heading in the wrong direction or maybe not in the right direction, no matter where you're at a year away or six months away or 10 years away, let's get going in the right direction and be prepared for it. Yeah. No, I think that's, uh, it's incredibly important. Again, that just can't be understated the, the factor of planning and time. Um, because, you know, there inevitably the window shortens and the amounts that you get probably will also shorten. Sure. Um, but, you know, I might be sitting here on the other end of uh, my headset or something like that and thinking, I have no idea what these guys are talking about. I'm not sure how I get to retirement. Look, the government handed me this thing and said it was my retirement benefits. And and 
I guess I'm protected. I guess I'm covered. Probably there will be checks at the end of this thing. Uh, how do I learn about any of this stuff? Well, Where do I, I start? You know, <clears throat> you know, at federal employee benefits, all three of us, and I want to make it very clear, we are actual financial advisors. There are people that profess out there to be financial people dealing with financials, but we are actual fiduciaries. When you hear the word talked about on television, you want to work with a fiduciary. We are fiduciaries, which puts us very much in having the responsibility that we're doing the right thing for the clown. And we are held accountable by that, mm -hmm. by the SEC. Wow. on what we talk to people about and recommendations that we make. So I think it's very important for anyone that's planning their retirement to make sure they're talking to someone that is a financial advisor and is a fiduciary. Mm -hmm. I think that the leaps and bounds that we've made over the years, more than anything, is getting people with the government, with their federal jobs, military jobs, Many of them are just too afraid to face the reality. Mm -hmm. Am I really going to make it? Mm -hmm. And it's getting them the courage to come in and sit down and say, okay, these are the adjustments you need to make. And some right. people are, are scared of the adjustments. But then sometimes, many times people like Brad and Levi, I know we've walked in and everything they're doing, we take the worry out of them and let them know, hey, you're going to work out pretty good the rate you're going. Yeah. yeah. And it, tying off of what Ron said, Sitting down with somebody and really fully understanding it, it th there's a lot of aspects on our personal day to day life. You know, maybe we have a pension, may, may, maybe we have some disability income, maybe we have some social security heading into our retirement, maybe we have that TSP, that 401k, maybe we have that nest egg, maybe we have rental properties uh, that we're going to be looking at and we're going, we have all these aspects. I just don't know how to put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, a real cookie cutter way we like to look at it with people is we tell them, listen, we've got at Federal Employee Benefits, we call it three different stages of life. Uh, we call it our growth stage, preservation stage, and then we have our conservation stage. So in our growth stage, everybody's years for this can be different. As a cookie cutter, I generally say, growth stage is zero to 55 years old. That can be different for anybody listening today. Okay. Um, our preservation stage is 55 to we'll say 62. I use those numbers because a lot of people take social security at 62. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean you should or you're supposed to, but it's a general. And then 62 is our conservation on uh, there on out. So our growth stage is our area where we're, yeah, we're building our TSP. We're building our 401ks. Uh, we're doing all this stuff. Um, to add to our or, or, or to really combine things through our investments to help prepare for retirement. Mm -hmm. Now, our preservation phase, uh, that 55 to 62 years old, that phase is very similar. Uh, we're still trying to grow our 401ks or our TSP or get our pension rolling, whatever it is. We're still trying to grow it, but we're just looking at it through a different window. We're kind of going, hey, maybe instead of cranking up, we're trying to really, really grow. Now we're growing and preserving. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of us know as we mm -hmm. get older, we start looking at life in general in that way. You know, maybe when you're younger, you want the red sports car. We start hitting mid-age, a little bit older. We're just glad it starts in the morning. We just need to go. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then as we hit our conservation stage, um, the, those are the years when we want to start using this money or mm -hmm. using the tools. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I kind of say it this way. I, I tell people retirement, like Ron said earlier, it's just a funny word somebody came up with. Most people that come into our office, we use the word retirement. And we say it's an area of our life that we maybe just don't want to work as hard or at all. Mm -hmm. And we want to use all the things that we've worked for over the years to help us enjoy our life a little bit more. So growth, preservation, conservation, that's the words we use uh, at Federal Employee Benefits. Uh, and we help you understand where you fall within there and how we get to the next stage. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think um, thinking about this, like maybe on, again, on the other end, uh, you might have this perception up front that the financial advisor is this stock marketeer, buy, 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 sell, 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 uh, <laughs> and somehow making these these drastic moves. But it sounds like y'all are really helping relate and educate. And there's so much uh, there's so much out there now, um, television ads, radio and otherwise. And 
I honestly couldn't tell you what to trust, how to trust, who to trust, Mm -hmm. if to trust. Um, How do you, you know, going back to that level of education or those stages that you have, uh, you know, tell me a little bit more about how you how you're educating those clients. So the great thing is, is that we do provide on, you know, in our way that we have webinars and seminars and things like that to to kind of, I mean, right now when we look at inflation is high, but then the market is low, right? So the market and everyone is thinking right now, oh my goodness, I'm losing all my money that I'm supposed to be growing in there. But if we think about it in people that have a lot more time is, well, this is a great time to be buying on sale, right? Market's down. Maybe I should be contributing 10% of my paycheck because I want things. Now, of course, we have to budget. I mean, budgeting is is everything when it comes into this piece. But we've got to look at, you know, we we take an approach, a unique approach is let's help you understand. Let's put that map together. Let's put that flow. Let's add the the VA disabilities. Let's add the pensions, the survivor benefits. You know, we have all these trainings that we can do for each and every person. And we have the software that puts all that together and projects that out for the client so they can see how all those things tie in together. And it really paints a great picture for them. Awesome. Yeah, in, the, in the government right now, when you put in a request for that, that's like six to eight weeks before they get anything. Well, we and can have it out in 10 minutes. We can have it out wow. in 10 minutes. But the good thing is, is that a lot of time people will run this and say, I plan on retiring at 62. Mm-hmm. We run it out and all they say is, you know, that looks all right. But what if I worked on a 65? We just plug it in the computer, runs it up to 65. And they say, hey, I may work three more years. That looks pretty good. Okay. So and there's bonus programs that are, in, that are involved where you get an extra 10% to your pension. There's all these little nuances in those benefits. And there's really just not the HR to provide those anymore. So right. that's really where we stand out uh, as a firm is to, you know, help people recognize, are you on the right track? And what tweaks do I need to meet that goal? And the more time we have, as Ron said in the very, very beginning, here's my income working. Here's my income retired. Mm -hmm. How much is it going to go down or how much more? And will inflation, will that affect me where I don't have to go back to work in 15 years and go, oh, I ran out of money. I got to go back to work. I mean, no one wants to do that. It's like, (laughs) who wants to drive a BMW and then go back and drive a a little, you know, used car? No, they're not going to take you at 80 years old. Oh, yeah, no. You're not going to be too marketable at 80 years old. I I absolutely (laughs) understand what you're talking about. I mean, the uh, I think the the notion uh, or the scare, right, for for many people post-retirement was like, Oh my God, I ran out of money. I guess I'll have to go and like be a Walmart greeter right. or something like right. that. And what a fear, right? You, you're not, you're not prepared. Now you're forced back into the workplace. Uh, I mean, that, that comes with so much fear. But, but, yeah. but then on the other hand, right? We have people that retire mm-hmm. and they got plenty of money and then they find they're not doing anything in about six, eight, months, a year into it, they're going, I need to go get a job over at Walmart or something. <laughs> just stay but do, it'd be a difference of doing it because you want to, not doing it because right. you have to. Right. right. Yeah. He, he brings up a really good point. We, you know, with all the people that we sit down with at Federal Employee Benefits, you know, when I said our happiest people are the people that prepare or that look at yeah. it, doesn't necessarily have to do with the lump sum of money that they have to live on or how big their pension is. It was them knowing th- this is what I'm walking into. So we get some clients that go, boom, you're, you're not going to need to work at all. You're, mm-hmm. You know, your pension with your Social Security, maybe a disability uh, combined with your TSP, all these different buckets coming. You look great. Uh, you don't need to do any. And then we get some clients where we go, you know, and if we plan this ahead of time and did it right, mm-hmm. we go, hey, uh, yeah, adding your pension, your Social Security and whatnot. Uh, but your standard of living is X amount of dollars a month. Hey, you may need to go get a job one or two days a week. And mm-hmm. these people walk into retirement knowing, hey, you know, I mm-hmm. just need a X amount of dollars coming in and I'm going to be able to keep my standard of living. One really, really neat thing we do for people is um, some of the software that we use uh, allows for us to plug in inflation, a mm-hmm. guesstimated inflation. Um, I don't know what the exact dollar amount is. Last 20 years, I think inflation has been almost 3%, somewhere oh, around there. Three. Yeah, okay. somewhere around there. So the software allows us to plug us in and say, hey, if we follow history on what it's done Mm -hmm. and your standard of living is 
uh, X amount of dollars a month. Now we add inflation to that. And so will my money keep up with, with inflation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. versus just going, oh, yeah, yeah, I think it ought to be fine. And so anyhow, we book it out and people walk into it going, yeah, maybe I do need to get a job working a day or two a week, but it's not a big deal right. if you know it walking into it. I know. It's I not love the that. door in the face. I love that. I think that's uh, something I also like to say, right? When I help uh, business clients, I say, uh, or folks that are starting businesses, I say, look, I don't want you to close down unless it's your choice to close down. Mm-hmm. Like, let's not make that a, a factor of non-planning or, or otherwise. Right? Well, that's the position I'm in. <laughs> <Where's> <laughs> I, I'm working because I just enjoy it. Right. You know, I don't need to work anymore, but mm-hmm. I enjoy it because I enjoy it. And that's when it takes, when you're taking the heaven to make money out of it. Right. And now it's working because it's fun. Right. And that's where I, I kind of look at well, it. And, and we look back in past and I mean, parents and grandparents that, you know, even if they made a meager living, they're retired right now with everything that they need. They don't need any extra money. They got money passing on to their heirs, all of those different pieces we're not seeing that trend anymore. We're seeing that, oh my goodness, are we living paycheck to paycheck? Are, right. we, are we not living within a budget? And and are we having that opportunity to save so that we have that rainy day money so that when inflation or the market's down, we've got the emergency stash set aside to ride through those things. And, I, and I'm going to say one last thing. Okay. And I think this is so important. I think what we try to do with people, especially when we on the subject about inflation today, right? Don't panic. Don't panic. I mean, I've lived through the 70s. I'm a little older than you guys. <laughs> I watched this in the 80s. But somehow in the midst of all of this and the problems that go on, and it did then, and we go back to the history of America mm-hmm. and through the market and everything, Americans are resilient people. Mm-hmm. They are resilient people, and we always find a way to make it work. And I just have that faith that it will continue to do the same thing. And even though we're in a rocky ship here, sometimes I wonder, and I do talk to my parents, which are now passed away, but my dad was a World War II guy. And I look back at that when they talked about back then, when things were as bad as they were in the Depression, they were saying, this country is going to fold and we're going under. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? It didn't. Right. Because Americans are just resilient. I love that. That's that's very strong, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess one of the last questions that I have, um, you said you won't ask anything else, you won't say anything else, but I, I won't hold you to it. Uh, <laughs> don't hold him to that. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, one of the last questions that I have is, is you know, as a financial ad- advisor, as a fiduciary, um, what kind of tangible elements you tell people to prepare, young or old? You know, how do you hedge this inflation? What do you do right now? Is that a budgeting thing? Is that what do you do? So that that's a very broad question. So as you said, as a fiduciary, I can't give a a blanket statement like, hey, set aside X amount of dollars or do this or do that. Um, But it goes back um, just to the fundamental of just pretty much every household, which we encourage um, budgeting and preparation. And we help them fit the product that fits their situation. Okay. Not every product in the world out there is a is a blanket product for everybody. And that's what we have the advantage of doing is using various products to meet those goals. And sometimes a combination of those products. Yeah. I, I tell people all the time, you know, everything starts with the old kitchen table um, in your home. Let's budget. And let's prepare. You know, one of the one of the sad things that I hear from people all the time is, you know, I bought this new car and I probably shouldn't have bought it and I probably shouldn't have spent that money. Uh, Brad and Ron and I at Federal Employee Benefits sit down with people all the time and we go, hey, there's a lot of situations where it's okay to spend that money on the new car. It's okay to spend that money on the new house if we budgeted and we planned ahead of time for us looking ahead into our future Mm -hmm. and then into our kids' future. So, yeah, it's it's great to enjoy the good things in life, but let's just get things in correct order. Um, I use this as an example all the time. You know, my parents were great at saving, uh, very Mm -hmm. frugal. Uh, Brad's parents, Ron's parents, the same way. Very frugal, good at saving money. In the world that we're living in right now, uh, I'm not going to say saving money isn't just good enough. 
But obviously, with inflation and things going up as high as they are, we have to have that money in some form of investment mm-hmm. tool where it's, Lord willing, growing along with that inflation. Because if it doesn't, as Brad mentioned earlier before, you know, you had $5 last week and you went to go buy a gallon of milk and you could buy a gallon of milk and uh, some M&Ms at the counter, whatever it was. Well, six months later, with that $5, you can't buy the gallon of milk and the M&Ms. You can only get the gallon of milk and maybe a sucker. So your money's not working as hard. So it's very important that, yes, we save And yes, we put things in the right tools so your money at least keeps up with inflation and hopefully does better than inflation. Yeah, that's right. I mean, taking advantage even at a younger age, as I talked about earlier with those Roth advantages, I'm working, I'm, I cover my budgets, all of those different things. I want to be able to prepare to have things in the long run. I mean, that's- You know, Roth IRAs, Brad's brought it up gives us you that free tax advantage of the other right. end. And a lot of people hear it, but they really don't know how it works. And for people that are younger, the not my age now, it's too late, but I'm just saying younger to take advantage of the putting products into the Roth IRA is a winner. Yeah. And you can do that as a contribution. You can do it as a conversion, mm-hmm. all of those different pieces. But it's, it's definitely, you know, recognizing that, you know, inflation is real, right? It's happening, but it's, unfortunately, we're seeing it like an, explanational part. I mean, my wife and I, we spent a lot of dates going to the grocery store, so we don't maybe not be going out to eat or those type of things. And we're seeing some of the basic staples are 50 to 80% higher in cost. So wow. like he said, instead of being able to get a gallon of milk, we're only allowed to get a half a gallon now, mm-hmm. right? Or they're turning around and we're seeing the new marketing piece of shrinkflation where it's the same cost, but the package is half the size oh, yeah. <laughs> or the bag looks the same, but there's half the contents in it. <laughs> yeah. The, the Lay's bag has all the more <laughs> air in it versus chips. <laughs> right. Exactly. So those are the biggest concerns is time, time, time. I mean, I've, I, we constantly say that over and over. You've got to not wait until it's too late. And these are, these are all things that you do at federal employee benefits. Right. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. And I, uh, I guess uh, just taking it forward, you know, I, I really appreciate all three of your time. Uh, I'm amazed and, and, and just excited to know that somebody's out there helping people, especially those that have served their duty in the federal arena uh, and giving them good advice, getting them on the right path. And, and you know, generally sharing beyond just uh, their own knowledge with the community, helping support opportunities for others, uh, because, you know, inflation is real, as you said, Brett. Right. Um, we may or may not be out of it tomorrow, but if you don't plan for tomorrow today, uh, you won't have anything uh, when it comes. So, and, and and beyond just the civil service and active duty reservists, the all the communities, we help their children, we help their friends, we help their family. We're not just saying if you don't work with the government, we can't help you, right? We just recognize being Military City USA, and we're proud of that, right? right? We're proud of that, is that we're here to provide that expertise level that is not necessarily in their forefront, but we are absolutely able to help anybody that wants to have a, a preparation, a roadmap to the future. Awesome. And then they got to stick with their plans. I mean, don't let the the world and everything's kind of you know, change their perspectives so that they can retire. You all got to be like me. <laughs> I dig <laughs> it. Um, so Ron, Brad, Levi, uh, is there anything else that uh, you'd like to leave? You have your two seconds to change the entire world uh, or help somebody uh, along the way. What, what are you leaving me with? Well, I just say in my part, I think that probably at fellow employee benefits, we're going to do there's lots of people throughout the country that are around that I've seen over 50 years that have want to help people with their federal benefits. But there has been no organization that I know of as like ours that has spent the time and the effort to build the knowledge and the basis that we have to work with as many federal employees as we work with and to have the good reputation that we have. So we apps, you know, we would love to help anyone that's in these situations. Yeah. And and at the end of the day, uh, there's not a charge to walk into the office. There's not a charge to pick up the phone call. There's not a charge to have an appointment. Um, you just happen to come across three guys 
um, in this financial world. Brad, Ron, and I at Federal Employee Benefits are just very passionate about what we do. You know, Ron, Ron said it earlier. It's it's become not a it's not a job anymore where you have to do it. You enjoy doing it. Um, I do person. I know personally myself. I do a lot of zooms from home. I think Brad does as well. We you know we get some. Uh, clients that don't maybe want to come into the office because they were concerned about uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. And so we give people three options. We go, hey, we can go old school and uh, we can come to your house. No big deal. Um, We can do it over Zoom or or you can just come into the office. And so a lot of times uh, people will pick up the phone and they go, hey, we just kind of want to feel out where we're at and what we're doing. Can we just jump on a 20 minute Zoom or a 30 minute Zoom? And uh, we go. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Uh, we help just give you a little guidance and path. And uh, maybe we do another Zoom. Maybe we come into the office afterwards, whatever it is. Um, but all three of us are very passionate about what we do. And I, I think probably one of the best best ways to summarize it up is uh, people first. We're about the people yeah. first. And so we, we kind of live to the belief if you serve other people first and you serve enough people, uh, you're going to be taken care of. And so that's just kind of the way we do business, Brad. Yeah, my, my son had asked uh, asked me, he was like, do you really like what you do, Dad? <laughs> and I'm like, I love what I do. I mean, when I can, every person has a different circumstance or story, right? A different, you know, whether a widow or a widower or they've got, they're a single mom or dad or whatever that's going through these types of decisions. Every person has a different situation and being able to help them navigate this big idea of planning for your future, right? I mean, you don't t- turn around and hire a pl- an electrician to do a plumber's job, right? You you look for people that say, make the path easier. And that's what I love doing is I love being there. It brings me a lot of satisfaction to be able to say, hey, you're on the right path. Congratulations. You did a good job. And when somebody goes, wow, I'm, I'm ready. And they're like, yeah, you're ready. And pat yourself on the back. That affirmation is, is so rewarding uh, to be able to, to change lives for those that are, even if they're retiring at age 40 as an active duty military member, is how do I prepare so that I can leave at 62 or whatever and those things and navigating the VA disabilities or navigating the inflation pieces? I mean, it's, it's absolutely something that we all love. And that's why he's still working, right? He loves it. He yeah, absolutely dude. loves it. I love it. I love it. Uh, helping uh, serve those who serve. I think that's amazing. And so I want to thank you all for your time and really uh, have enlightened me, given me some some thoughts about my own uh, uh, retirement and what to do next. And so I just want to thank you again for participating in the San Antonio Express News Investment Guide. Um, insider guide and uh I look forward to talking with you again in person maybe I'll, I'll come by your office sounds great absolutely <laughs>